Hi guys, welcome back to another video. For today, I thought it would be fun to pull out my Copic markers and work on a illustration with these. So we're doing this blue tang fish and I'm starting with my lightest color, which is my B24. And I'm gonna be laying this down in his top fin area. And for my blue markers, I'm using the B24, B29 and B39. And I am using some smooth um, cardstock for this. I think it's Bristol smooth paper. And I'm just laying this lightest blue color that I have down as a base layer. Now this isn't the perfect blue I would have liked for my lightest blue, but it's the one I had, so I'm going with that. Now I'm going in with the B29, and I'm putting this towards the middle and back half of where the fin is in a little bit more shadow. And then I'm going to go back to that lightest color and just sort of blend the two markers together. Now, one great thing with Copic markers, they are alcohol markers and they, brand, they blend extremely nicely together, especially on smooth paper. That's why I love the Bristol Smooth uh, Paper from Strathmore for Copic markers. Now I'm taking that darkest blue, the B39, and I'm going to use this for the little um, dark areas, the, the details in the fin. And I'm going to just take this in like little lines and create those little fin patterns. Now with Copic markers, you don't have to have every color. Normally close enough is good enough. You know, if you have a blue color, use it. Um, I wouldn't go out and buy every Copic marker just so that you have every color. So here, the lightest color that I have isn't the perfect color, but it still gets the job done. You know, you can still tell it's a blue tang fish in the end. So again, I'm just blending those colors together a little bit so that um, the lines on his fin don't stand out too starkly. And I will end up speeding up any parts that are repetitive, but I want to make sure I, um, you know, explain what I'm doing first and then I'll go in and speed it up a little bit. So again, just blending those colors together. And I like to use my lightest marker to kind of go over all of them um, because it, the lightest markers I find will blend into the darker colors better than the darker colors blending into the lighter ones because then you lose your lights. So I'm just taking that B24 and now I'm pretty much going to go over most of the fish. So down until about the bottom three quarters, I'm going to fill all that in of the fish. And I'm leaving the, the area that's black. I'm going to leave that. So I'm being slightly careful to follow my outline here, but another great thing that I find on um, the Bristol Smooth Paper is the Copic markers don't bleed out of your, you know, sketch work um, easily at all. Like you would have to really scrub and put a few layers um, next to your line work for them to bleed out. So that's another good reason I like to use the, the Smooth Paper. Now, if you were using you know, uh, watercolor paper or mixed media paper, then these markers would bleed out, you know, extremely easily. And they would also bleed through to the next side, the back side of the paper. They will bleed through a little bit in the cardstock, but that's if you're putting, you know, multiple layers in the same area, you'll see a little bit of shadowing, but they won't come through completely. Now this is heavy um, paper too. I think it's at least 100, maybe 110 pound smooth paper. So the thinner paper you're using, again, it will come through. I'm going back in with that B29 and I'm just starting to put some details in below his fin. And I'll also start putting them in a little bit on his face, but I'm gonna have to build the color up because as I start putting more darks in there, I realize that these little areas, these are like the, skin folds in his fin where the fin's moving and um, some little 
cracks and areas um, near his face, I realized, you know, later on they're not dark enough. And I'm just using that lightest marker again to kind of help um, blend those areas in a little bit. You'll notice I can go right over that top layer if I let it sit for a few seconds without blending it right away. It will mostly stay in its place and I like that about the alcohol markers too because then I can use those you know to make like standout marks like this. So there's this little dark line right before his fin. I'm just using that B39 to color this in completely. I think that's where his gill is. And this is a nice stark, you know, area there. So I'm not blending it out uh, too much. You just notice me just blending slightly around the edges. Now you'll see I'm starting to take the caps off because for the bottom half of him, I want to be able to easily access my markers really quickly so that I can blend them easier. Um, so that's another tip that I like to do when I've got an area that I need to switch back and forth between a couple of markers. I'll even keep a few in my hand, you know, and I'll just grab them and put one down and grab another one. So I'm starting with the um, my N6 with it, which is my neutral um, 6. And there's a little bit of a a brighter, it's not quite a highlight there, but it's not as dark as the other dark. So I'm just using that to make a line there and I'll go around it with my other um, blues. And you'll see me doing that here. I'm just going around that area because I want to keep that little line as like sort of a hint of a highlight in the dark areas. And now I'm starting with my darkest color again, which is the B39. And I'm going to start laying this into the bottom half of them. And then I'm going to blend in with the B29 and blend further in with the B24 again. And again, I'm just making sure that little line, it's hard to see on this video, um, but in person, it's just a slightly light, lighter line there. So now I'm starting to take that darkest blue marker and I'm going to sort of like outline him and then start filling him in. And with alcohol markers, you know, you want to make sure that you're not scribbling in different directions, but they do layer and blend really nicely. So I'm not trying to be perfect here, like cover it every area perfect because as soon as you go over top of it, it's going to blend it out really nicely. So now I'm switching to that B29 and again I'm switching quick so that I can get the marker while it's still slightly wet. Um, the wetter the marker is that you've put on previously will be easier to blend in with. So if I would have let that first color sit there for you know a minute or two it would be a little bit harder to blend into it. The closer your colors match the easier it would be um, to blend back into it later but the further your colors are from each other then um, the quicker you kind of have to blend them. And again, I'm just bumping up some of those details under his fins. And now I'm going in with that light marker. And because this color and the other blue color aren't super close to each other, I am going to have to work a little bit more uh, to blend. So you'll notice I'm really going over that area back and forth, back and forth. And I'm really focusing right on that line, that that blue line because um, I want that area to blend as much as possible. So 
So I'm just really taking my time, making sure I'm, you know, going back and forth. And you can see I'm scrubbing it really good and it's not gonna damage this type of paper, um, you know, running your alcohol marker over it. Now, as I'm blending the lighter color out, I like to tend to just go back over everything because sometimes um, when you go over an alcohol marker again, the second layer is slightly darker than the first layer and you can see where there's a little bit of a line. So I'll just bring my lightest marker right back over everything and it'll get rid of any of those um, lines. And again, just blending those details in around his mouth a little bit. I want them to stand out, but not so much that it looks darker than the darks on the line. Now there's this little tiny fin part that comes out at the bottom of him. So I'm putting that in now. And I'm using the lightest one, which is the B24, and the darker one, which is the B39. And I'm just creating that little tiny fin that's coming out. So I'm using the darker one to go around the edges and the lighter one on the, um, the inside where there's like a slight highlight. And then I'll blend out with the lighter color, the B24. And there's a slight little yellow fin next to this, but we'll put that in after when we go in with our yellows. So I'm starting to work on that back fin and I'm pretty much doing the exact same thing I did with the top fin. So I'm using that B39 to go in and create those stripes. And then I'm gonna use the the B29 and the B39 and I think even a little bit of the N6 or the N black to make this um, fin as dark as possible. So I'm using that black marker right now and this is just the, the pure black marker. And I'm just going around it and I'm going on the inside and I'll go around the outside of it as well. Just to create the, the really dark areas in the fin. And I'm pretty happy with that part, so I'm going to start moving on, finishing up his top fin here, and working on the black part of him. So I'm using that B29 to do sort of an underlayer under his black part of the fin there, so that the, the blue will still come through it. And now I'm just going in with the black and I'm filling in the black areas in the fin. And 
And I'm taking my time here because this is a smaller area. But another uh, great thing about the Copic markers is you can see such a fine tip that they have. On one end, they have the fine uh, nib tip here, and the other end, So I'm pretty happy with the blue parts now. I'm going to move on. And I'm starting with those two gray highlight areas. And I'm starting with the N6, which is the neutral 6. And I'm just laying over that uh, blue area that I had laid down. I'm putting the gray first. And now I'm just taking my black and I'm going to blend those areas together first. And then again, I always go back in with that lighter color and just blend the edges a little bit. Now I'm just going to take this black marker and I'm just going to block in all the black areas on him. And I'm going to speed this part up a little bit because you've seen me just lay the marker down. You've seen me, you know, blend them quite a bit at this point. So And here I'm just starting to work on his fin a little bit. So I'm taking that uh, darkest blue, the B39. And I'm putting that in the more like left hand side where there's a bit of a shadow and underneath. And then I'm going to take the B29 and just put that in all the other areas and, and blend it together. And now this area here to the bottom right of his fin is sort of like the shadow from his fin. So that's got to be a pretty dark area too. And I'll take the lightest marker and blend that out just slightly. So now I'm working on his eye. I'm taking that N6 and I'm going just around the edge of the eye because that's slightly lighter. And then I'm going to fill in his eye with just the black. And I'll go on top at the end with a little bit of a gel pen. I think this is the Jelly Roll white pen. Because Copic markers aren't um, archival, Normally I wouldn't suggest going on top of your artwork with gel pens or, 
you know, things like that, um, paint markers. But since Copic markers aren't archival anyway, I don't mind going on top of them with some gel pens. And I'm just adding a little bit of that blue back into those areas where I see it in the reference photo. So now I'm going to go in and start working on his yellow fins. And I'm going to take the YG21, which is a really, really light, like green yellow or yellow green, I guess, marker. And I'm using that for his front thin, fin here. Because I can see just a slight green tinge in there. And then I'm taking my Y11 and just putting it just slightly in the middle to darken it up a little bit. And I'm also using that YG21. And I'm gonna use this in sort of the first half of his fin here in the back. And then a little bit um, on the back of his fin here, sort of where it curves down. There's these little grooves in the fin um, where it's just a little more translucent. And that's where I'm using this color. And then I'm gonna go in with that Y11. You could use Y11 or Y13. Um, I had pulled out both, and I can't remember exactly which one I grabbed, but they're both fairly close to each other. And I'm just filling in the other areas with this marker. And that's the Y15 that I grabbed, um, just to get a little bit brighter areas, a couple areas um, where the sun's catching on its fin, or the light, I guess it, well, the sun goes through the water too, so it could be the, the sun or the, the light, but uh, I'll take my white pencil after and add a little bit of highlights there as well. So you saw me just add that little yellow fin in there and I'm taking that darkest blue and just putting that around that as well. And again, I'm just going in with that darkest blue B39 and I'm really wanting to darken up that bottom area there to make it stand out. And again with that B29, I'm just doing the exact same thing that I had before, sort of blending all the colors together. Now I'm creating these little dots that are on the front of his face. So all I'm doing is taking my B29 and I'm taking the very tip of the marker and just tapping it on the paper just ever so lightly. And in some areas I'm pressing just a little bit bigger towards his eye and then as I come away from his eye I'm just pressing ever so slightly so that I have a little bit darker and bigger spots near his eye and some lighter ones and smaller ones away from his eye. 
and I'm just doing quick tapping motion. I don't want it to be, you know, I don't want to be making spots that look um, like a pattern. I want them to look organic. So I'm sort of just trying to be loose and quick and, and tapping as quickly as I can to create more of an organic pattern. And then I'm just darkening up those little lines around his face and around his fin one last time. And then I'm going to take my light blue, the B24, and I'm just gonna slightly blend the area together. So you'll see here I'm not rubbing, I'm using that tip to tap it in. So I just wanna tap it over those colors to ever so slightly blend them in, but I don't, I still want them to be, you know, stark spots on him. And then I'm just doing the same thing on those little lines there, his little wrinkles. And then I've noticed um, this little patch here I didn't go over, so it's a little bit lighter than the rest of him. So I'm just going over that a few times to darken it up so that it matches the rest of his body. There, so now I'm just going around the eye again. Um, I really want his eye to be nice and dark. And then you see I've got my, I believe it's the Jelly Roll uh, pen and then my white Prismacolor pencil. So because his um, fin is fairly translucent, I'm going to take the Prismacolor pencil and sort of create that top edge to his fin. It's not going to be as stark and as bright as would be if I would use the, the jelly roll, so it will look like it belongs there more. But for the bright whites in the eyes, I'll use the, the jelly pen. And I'm just creating these little thin lines, like it would look like his, um, like those lines in his fin. And then I'm gonna attach them all with a little line. So here you just see me creating a little line, attaching all those lines together, and it's going to look like it's the translucent part of his fin. And then I'm taking that Prismacolor pencil again and I'm just hitting the, the high areas in his fin to create a little bit of uh, brightness there where there's some highlights because there wasn't um, enough contrast between my yellows. Now if you want a, a bigger, brighter contrast, you could use your Jelly Roll there too or whatever pen or paint marker that you're using. And now I'm just making sure my jelly roll there is working. And I'm just going to create two little dots where I see two little highlights in his eye. And I'm just going over them, making sure these are the, the brightest areas in him. And that's our fish for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please subscribe, hit the like, and hit the notification bell so you know when I post. 
and thank you for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video.